Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 1972 Italian giallo film So Sweet, So Dead. And this is the first time I'm crossing into the realm of watching giallo films for review online. And I got this one from the YouTube channel Giallo Realms. They have a ton of giallo films, so that's a place you can go if you want to see some giallo. There's a lot. So I'll be working through, well, my plan is to go through all of them, but we'll see. Uh, I want to go through a lot. Anyway, So Sweet, So Dead, directed by Roberto Bianchi Montero, who also did some films such as The Island Monster, Sexy Folly, Heat in the Suburbs, and Caligula's Hot Nights. So you can kind of get a feel for horror as well as, you know, um, sexploitation kind of. Uh, there were some westerns in there. There were some war movies, which was very common in Italy over the decades. So yeah, kind of went with a lot of the uh, trends. Written by Montero as well as Luigi Angelo, who also wrote scripts for Operation White Shark, Black Tigress, Black Killer, and The Puma Man, and Italo Fasan, who wrote scripts for Operation White Shark, and Goldface the Fantastic Superman. That's an interesting one. That's not all. That's just a, you know, a sampling. Uh, yeah. Apparently, a version of this film was actually released in the United States under the name Penetration, and there had been actual uh, hardcore sex <laughs> sex scenes edited into the film that had nothing to do with the original filming and production of the film, and it was distributed that way as, you know, a porn in essence, as well as like a quasi-porn, and they ended up having to pull it off the market then because... Farley Granger, the man who plays in the uh, Inspector Capuana, uh, threatened to sue over it because it made it look like he was the one, one of the ones actually engaged in sex, even though it wasn't actually him. It was added scenes after the fact. So that ended up uh, getting nixed. So yeah, I thought that was very interesting. So opening with a naked dead body is a very bold way to go with this film. I was thinking, oh man, here we go. It's going to be a lot of deaths. It's going to be gory. It's going to be in your face. And I mean, there are a good amount of deaths to the film and it is kind of bold in certain ways, but the kills are not that great. Like that's one of the big things that I don't like about this film. Overall, I do like this film. I will say for one of the main reasons being there are good twists to it and the pacing in the beginning of it is quite good, but... The the um, the kills just look terrible. Like, they, they look awful. Let's be honest about that. If you've seen this film and you're watching it, like, the stabbing and the slashing, it looks fake. It looks like they're pulling it. You know, it's like soft stabbing. It's soft slashing. It's And it's always the same. Like, there's no, there's no variety, really, to keep you engaged. So I don't like that aspect of it, but I do overall like the film. And I'll talk about, obviously, reasons why. I like how Inspector Capuana just glances at all the people rounded up uh, as potential sp suspects and says that he doesn't think they're going to find what they're looking for in that bunch. Well, he eventually actually does find what he's looking for in that bunch, as in the one character who's being talked to initially out of that group, who he uses later as a mock, uh, a mock uh, killer to draw out the real killer which I'll talk about when we get closer to that, which was a smart move. With the scratched out face on the photo of the dead woman and her lover, it's meant to insinuate murder out of jealous rage. Now, they don't ever fully explain why the killer ends up killing the way he does. Or, I mean, they do, but they don't get into the further motivation of that particular individual, the professor. They're, they just are like, oh, he's killing all women who are sleeping around on their on their men. And obviously, he's he's kind of doing it as a revenge for the men, in a sense. So you would get the idea that he had been cheated on at some point in his life. Uh, because, obviously, he's not looking for the men involved in the affairs to be called out because he's scratching out their faces. And also, he even gives the, um, gives the tip off at the very end to Roberto, I believe it is that uh, Capuano knows that he's sleeping with his wife and, you know, gives him the ability to get out of there before anything goes down. So, yeah. Although that may have also been part of getting her alone to kill her. So I guess it's a dual purpose thing. You know, being naked improves you. 
what a line from this film. I forget exactly who said it. It was someone very early on in the film, but that line, you know, being naked improves you. I'm going to use that at home with my wife and just see how that goes over. I think she'll laugh at it, but um, I just thought that was a funny line from the film. The death scene for Serena looks weak when it comes to the stabbing because it's overly dramatized. All the kills, really, in general. But the slow motion shot of, of the woman running with the killer behind her looks really awesome. The only problem being they then take that slow motion and beat it to death because they keep going with the slow motion, keep going with the slow motion. And then that just really slows the pace down of the scene and the impact of it, and it kind of sucks at that point. But the initial portion of the slow motion of showing her running on the beach away from the killer and the killer behind her, I guess the way you're looking at it, as a viewer, it's it's to the left, looked really good. That was really cool. I felt like that kind of increased the drama of the situation and the tension of the situation. So I liked it initially, but then they just keep going with the slow-mo and you're just like, okay, we can, we can be done with this right now, please. Gaston is such a creepy character, and they really focus on that. He must end up being the prime suspect that they want you to suspect for the film. Uh, they always do that with Giallo films. They always have this one character who they make look super, super suspicious and or super, super creepy so that people would initially think, oh, well, that guy is the creepiest or the most suspicious. It could be him. But no. Us people who watch plenty of Giallo films know better than that. We know that that's the large red herring that they've thrown out in front of you. And that's the case with Gaston. And I thought it was interesting because with Gaston, I feel like they placed him working with the professor for the specific purpose of drawing attention from the professor. Because those two were working together, obviously, um, processing the dead bodies. And... Because he's so so out there and creepy and crazy, people are very focused on him. And because the professor is so mild-mannered, seems like a professional, stands up for Gaston, and also, or I think they say Gastone, and also um, doesn't show up that much in the film. He's mainly just there in the very beginning and then not there until the end again where he's revealed to be the killer because they want you to forget about him and then bring him back and be like, Oh, yes, that guy. That gets done in Giallo a lot. I love that. I love it. I think it's great. And a lot of times it actually does work for me because I'm so wrapped up in the actual film, the story, that I've forgotten about that person. I'm like, yes, that's right. But in this case, I didn't because with how hard they went with Gaston and then that scene with the professor uh, saying that it couldn't be Gaston really made me think that it was the professor because I was like, yeah, they're probably playing it so hard on Gaston to take the heat away from the professor or the attention away from the professor. Plus that scene in particular shows that the professor didn't want the killings associated with someone who's kind of creepy and weird and almost kind of insane um, because those were his killings. Like he was taking some pride into them, uh, pride in them. And uh, you see that in the very end. That's how he's able to be kind of pulled out of hiding by Capuano. Anyway, and once again, the idea of a sex maniac as the killer is introduced. This is something that happens to Giallo all the time. This was thrown out in the film. I'm always, always waiting for it to be said by the people investigating the deaths in any Giallo film. They always say, ah, it's a sex maniac. So it's in this one. Uh, they do paint a good picture of how tough Capuana's job is because of how careful he needs to be because of the high-profile people involved with the killings. You know, obviously the women who are cheating on their men, it can't be known that they were cheating because all of these people are kind of in high society there, very highly thought of, pillars of their community, all that jazz. So it does give you a good feeling of how tough it is for Capuana to do his job, so it really places limitations on him which kind of, you know, ratchets up the tension for him and for you as an audience member. The scene with Capuana paying Gaston a visit is very over the top. Uh, it makes you very much sure that Gaston is not the killer, especially the moment where Gaston says, you know, you can check out my, you know, this, this room that you were looking at, the one where all the pictures are, and then how proud he is of these pictures of the dead women that he's like, are they dead or are they alive? They look beautiful either way, blah, blah, blah. It just, it plays so hard at the creepy 
out-of-touch guy that you just know it can't be him. Um, I guessed Professor, or I already talked about guessing Pro Professor Casali, that was his name. Um, yeah, the exact moment I guessed that it was him was that moment that he was saying it could not be Gastone to Capuana, just so you know. Well, hell. <laughs> uh, hell of a fall uh, Lily's husband has down the stairs. I thought that was kind of a funny, weird thing that they had where um, he had the, um, oh man, the apparatus to help him walk. Lily's husband, you know, Lily gets killed outside and then her husband starts trying to come down the stairs and then he just like falls. But that was like, I'm not going to say it was a graphic fall, but it looked like it was a fall that probably actually hurt the guy who was the stunt guy who did the fall in all honesty. And it was a pretty rough fall. And I was just like, Oh, I did not see that coming. So you have a actual intentional death and an unintentional death at the same scene. Bettina's fear is highlighted in an over-the-top way when she's in the elevator with the guy who's dressed like the killer. Um, I think that they kind of do go over the top with that moment. Like, you can have that moment in the film, and it makes sense. Like, it shows kind of her uh, trauma that she's dealing with from seeing Lily be killed and seeing the killer. And then this guy getting on the elevator who's dressed like that. You know, and then her fear, she's kind of like huddled to a degree in the corner of the elevator but they drew it out so long and they made her overact it so much that you're just like, okay, you know, we get the point here. You drove it home. Um, as soon as you see, see Franca on the train, you know she's about to get killed, especially because she's already shown having had an affair. That's another thing. You, you quickly learn within this film that any woman you see who seems well-to-do, who is having an affair, is probably going to die. Uh, and I think every single one of them does. Uh, they all end up getting killed. I was thinking maybe Capuana's wife would not end up getting it, but obviously in the end she does get it, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later because that was kind of surprising to me. One of the reasons I liked the film because it was surprising. For being an innocent person, person, Paolo sure does like to make himself come off as suspicious when he talks with Capuana. That was uh, Franca's husband, who was very standoffish with Capuana. I mean, obviously he wasn't the killer and he had nothing to do with any of this, but it's another one of those examples of just in Giallo films, they want certain characters or more characters to be standoffish, to be suspicious, to be ridiculous, creepy, whatever, in order to throw suspicion from the actual killer. And that's the reasoning, I assume, for, um, what's his name again? Paolo, to be that way. Um, very minor character. He's like barely in it, but um, so it doesn't feel realistic. Like he, pr especially with his wife being killed. I even though they didn't have the greatest relationship, you see that in there. I'm sure he he would have still been more apt to help Capuana with with that, unless he was mainly just concerned about the information about the affair getting out there. Because it seemed like he was very much aware of the affairs that were going on. Anyway. The scene of Renata around the house is very drawn out. Uh, I assume it's kind of meant to feel like she could get killed at any moment that the killer could show up at any point, uh, especially because of the tarot card reading that she just ended up having. I mean, I knew especially because of that tarot card reading, obviously foreshadowing that she was going to end up getting it. But the fact that they draw it out so long, it, it's kind of too much. They can You can draw it out for a... a kind of long time and and that maintains tension because it really feels like ooh, it could happen in any moment and i have a feeling like it's coming but i just feel like they they drew it out way too long especially because there's no music involved with it either to kind of like entertain you while she's just kind of walking around the house doing things it's like mm. i do like the scene of renata trying to escape up the spiral staircase i thought that was particularly good but she must have known or i guess figured out that uh, that's a low probability escape plan right there. Uh, I guess she was just going for whatever she could find near her. Uh, not the best way to get out of there, but it was it served to be a good scene because it looked like it was tough to climb up those stairs. I'm sure it was. Interesting twist with Capuana staging an arrest and and a confession to try and anger the real killer. Obviously, his whole idea behind it being this is a more principled, sophisticated killer. So if we fake a arrest 
and have someone else confess who acts like they're crazy and over the top and totally nuts, then that's going to spurn this actual killer and draw him out of hiding because he has a level of pride that he's taking in the actual killings, which is seen by the fact that he's actually leaving the photos at the crime scene. He's leaving a calling card, which is showing that he's proud of what he's doing, and he wants the information out there about why he's killing. And obviously that happens because then Capuana ends up getting the call from the killer, which is a very shocking, great moment that I wrote. Great moment when the killer informs Capuana that his wife is cheating on him, and you can see it shook him to his core. Good acting uh, by Capuana, the guy um, Farley, Farley Granger, who played Capuana, really good acting at that moment. And that was a really shocking moment for me. I did not see that moment coming. I think it's a great twist to it. Because all this time, Capuana is going after this killer who's killing philandering women. He never considered for a moment, even though we find out that there are some very strong indicators, that his wife was cheating on him. And I also love just like those, those flashbacks that he starts thinking about where he's like, oh yeah, with that dude Roberto... I guess it didn't seem a little weird, like, how much she looked at him and laughed with him. Uh, the fact that she was just putting on her clothes when she came out of her bedroom when I got home early, and then Roberto came out after her. It's like dense, 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 dense. Um, that stuff is a little unrealistic. I think they could have woven some things in there that feel a little more realistic that he could look back on and be like, ah, yes, it was easy to miss this. But the certain things like her just putting her clothes on and Roberto being there, come on, man. Like, come on. <laughs> but but regardless, great moment when he's informed that his wife is cheating and that he she's going to be another victim. Love that. And then the next one, the next one, the other big twist I did not see coming that I was like, oh, man. When Cabuana gets there in time to potentially save his wife, but just watches the killer kill her through the window. I was like, wow. Uh, and so obviously he was upset enough about her cheating that he was willing to let her die as revenge. Um, yeah. And then his hands were, were clean. Good ending. Good ending. So I, I really did enjoy this, but... I also feel like there were some pacing issues towards the end of the film. I'll kind of wrap up with some final thoughts here real quick. Any following shots uh, with uh, were kind of showing the footsteps. I don't, I don't know if it was just the version I was watching on Giallo Realm or what, but when they had like the cameraman doing following shots with characters, you could kind of see like the little um, uh, impacts of the steps that the cameraman was taking, which got distracting at times. So that's one of the things I didn't like. The sex scenes are terrible and clumsy in this film. Like just awful sex scenes is horribly choreographed. I don't know if, if you think the same thing, but geez, uh, like many Giallo films, mirrors got used in this a bunch, you know, either a scene of, you know, starting in a mirror and then going over to the person or just showing a person through their reflection in the mirror. Or my favorite is when Capuano was uh, at Gastone's place talking to him and they're showing you the mirror. They're showing you Capuana face on, but to the side you could see the mirror and you could see Gastone's reflection looking back at Capuana in the mirror. That was a cool shot, but that gets done a lot in Giallo. They love to use mirrors in Giallo films and no exception here. This has some pretty bad pacing issues when it hits about the one hour mark. Up until the one hour mark, I think it moves pretty well. Once you get there, pacing starts to become a big problem. It slows down considerably, but then it does obviously pick up at the end. But it's it's like an hour and 40 minute movie, and I don't think it really picks back up until 15 minutes until the end, maybe, something like that. So it's a little problematic. But like I said, overall, I did enjoy this. Uh, it is one I would watch again. I uh, love the twist to it, obviously. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm giving it a very solid three-star rating. It's not in like my top whatever Giallos. It's not top 10. It's probably not top 15 or anything, but it's a good one. I haven't seen that many Giallo films that I wouldn't watch again, and this one I would definitely watch again. Love to hear your thoughts on it. Go ahead and put comments down there, or just Giallo in general. Also, if you're looking for more Giallo film reviews, I have an entire playlist on my channel. I have... 
a lot. I have about 50, 50 at this point, and I'm going to keep going, obviously. Um, also, you can put some comments down there on particular Giallo films you'd like me to get to and review sooner rather than later. I plan on hitting as many as I can, but if you have certain ones you want to see sooner rather than later, let me know down there. Do me a favor, though. Hit that subscribe button if you like this review video or any video I've ever done. That is your way to repay me. This costs no money. Um, it takes you literally a second, and it's totally painless to just subscribe, and I really appreciate it. It really does keep me motivated to keep doing these. Also hit the notification bell button because that way you'll know when I'm putting up new videos, whether it's one of these videos or a no-spoiler review video for a newer film or a haul video, unboxing, any of that jazz. Regardless, though, I really do thank you for taking your time to watch this. It does mean a lot to me. And until next time, keep it brutal.